Um, I think that, but I suppose how place happens in mind is it arises through the process, and it's, it's kind of through a process of um, of uncertainty and, and just. So when I make a painting, I paint something, and then I paint it, paint over it, and paint over it, and I don't really know where I'm going or what I'm doing, but slowly something arises, and and it's something that starts to feel like something else. But I think what's I suppose coming back to the other point as well that that's something to do with um, a relationship between the painting as a, as a thing, as a material object, being mm. material stuff on a surface, which you know for mine is pretty flat. Mm. I'm still interested in it as a thing and as the illusion of a thing. So mm. the illusion of a an illusion of a thing. Um, but yeah, I suppose I suppose a place starts to move whenever any kind of space happens in the painting. Mm. So when you look at you know maybe Alex's, which is everything's very closely aligned on the surface, that there isn't that kind of huge sense of illusory depth. Um, there's still a place in terms of yeah. somewhere where something takes place. Yeah, so maybe the surface becomes the place, and the painting itself. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I suppose they all have that. that <coughs> you know, places are. Is a, something where something is happening and changing and, and evolving, and even though that's happening on all of them, if you've got time, time spent on them. Um, yeah, it's just, it just struck me as something quite interesting, I, particularly someone like Richards, which is a, a kind of a place, but it's not your, it's not, it's nowhere that, it's not a place you know, right? Is it? It's not, these are places that you, um, are, are somebody else's place. Yeah, somebody else's uh, place. I think more and more, you know, I certainly, as a, as a painter, I think the placement of the objects I'm placing is, is key and central to the work as, as much as the objects themselves are, which is something that I've only really come to terms with over the last couple of years. Um, and there's an uncanny nature created that I'm painting an object that's recognisable to, to most people, people feel an affinity with it, but there's something going on about its placement that, that, that makes it feel strange and odd. These photographs are often photographs that I work from are often taken in warehouses, for instance. And this, yeah, that's serving two purposes for me. It declutters the paintings um, so that I can concentrate on one or possibly two objects. Um, and it creates a, a, a foremost framework for me to work within. I think what, what started to happen with, uh, with my painting was uh, a few years back I was um, well, if I go back to five, six years, I found myself measuring the actual objects. I was, I was working from arrangements of objects, and I found myself actually measuring the proportions of those objects with a ruler, uh, actual size, and then taking those measurements back to the canvas and trying to reproduce the object actual size on the canvas. And then also looking at the uh, depth, the, the space in which I was painting them and how that depth obviously changed the size of the work visually um, and I found myself sort of increasingly um, sort of looking at the measurements, the um, relationships of size and, uh, and depth uh, more and more to the point where I started to think well um, what am I really painting here and um, you know, I'm actually work I'm actually working from the object. Am I um, really just working from measurements of the object? Um, you know, it, it all became a bit kind of mixed up. You know, and so as, that's where the the um, realization that really abstraction was starting to come into the work without entirely knowing why at that point. But you know. I think I think when you say like talk about that, it kind of reminds, takes me back to looking at someone like you and you guys' work and that kind of real attempt to pin something down. Yeah. The closer you get to it, yeah. The further away you go, yeah. Away. yeah. Um, That's yeah. quite odd about that. And you kind of then start start to lose your position, yeah. if you like, uh, which is kind of this is me and that's exactly the thing yeah. in front of me. Once you start to examine that. Well, but once you start, then you start to, when you're arranging the objects themselves, you start to think about that arrangement mm. in those terms. So next thing you know, you're choosing objects that are either rectangular or something else mm. uh, that fit colour-wise with, you know, 
and the whole game of, of organising the objects becomes kind of part of the, the, the whole thing and soon is the object part of the work is that, is that actually the work you know mm. that question starts to, to come into your mind so you know before you know what you, 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 you're in a bit of a pickle <laughs> I'm quite interested in the, the debates between uh, Jordan and Freed etc this Jordan's attempt to be almost all object the kind of the literalness of that this is a Entirely present as object, and, and the kind of uh, it's almost a, a, a fantastic failure that idea. You know, you, you have to will that to be the case. Once you open yourself up to uh, a world of pictures, I think as soon as you break a picture plane in painting, and Judd acknowledged this, you're in another place. You're in in picture land. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're, you know, you're not just here. You're here and you're there, whatever there might be. So I'm quite interested in the idea of maintaining that relationship of, of, of awareness of process and presentness, whilst also thinking about this kind of play that I'm engaged in, in terms of conjuring up associations, pictures, likeness, whatever, and then backing off from that a little bit. And the more I back off from it, the more it seems to come back to some kind of paint or, or presentness in the studio. Uh, and the more I let myself be seduced by pictures, uh, the more I'm somewhere else. And it's that play that I think I'm, I'm dealing with almost all the time. And, and, an, and a desire to maintain that in some form, it might shift its shape, you know, but you know, there's, there's, a, there's a dissatisfaction with the literal to me. Mm. Uh, but there's also a skepticism about being fully immersed in picture land, if I can put it that way, mm. uh, because it seems to take me away from mm. me being here doing this. I think that follows through with my kind of thoughts on, on the old, particularly that sense of becoming, we're not quite there, I think we talked about it, that kind of, I recognise it's a sort of familiar but unfamiliar place that you're in or thing that you're trying to get to. Um, has anybody else got any, any thoughts on that, on what Tom was talking about? Mm. Just because I'm talking about myself. Um, mm. <laughs> right. The pictures I was doing, I was thinking about um, what I used to really love when I first started painting, which is looking at um, Renaissance paintings and these kind of feelings of the narrative and mythical stories and the beauty of the paint and all this kind of stuff. And the drawing as well. Mm. And then, obviously, how do you do that in a contemporary context? And my, thing that you could pull out in this instance was how a three-dimensional three sculptural shape can be just a, a simple stroke of paint and a simple stroke of paint which is one stroke on one surface and it's still simple back it still gives you so much but on the other hand it doesn't feel anything down the closer you get you get to the point where the image disappears um, and then you have all sorts of narrative aspects that come into that as well so that was one thing the other thing was thinking about how paintings used to be made you would get a in the Renaissance time, you get a model, you draw it, you use a drawing to create a cartoon, and then you went off and composed your figure. And often, some of the figures are impossible figures, although they're gods and god, you know, things which are very mythical. The poses are completely odd. You know, the arm would be borrowed from one position, and the legs would be borrowed from another position, and you'd sort of idealize the figure anyway. So, um, what I'm trying to say is the more I looked into this, the more you start getting into this world of abstraction, the more you get into this world of impossible images, and the more you get into the materiality of something. But from a very, um, a very process-led approach. Mm. Yeah.